Hello and welcome to today's edition of Your Questions Answered with Father Gruner. I'm John Veneri. In this program, we take the questions that you give us and Father Gruner answers them and we talk about them. And continue to send these questions to us, please. Questions at thefatimacenter.com. It says here, uh, this, this question, this person says, I have learned that many of Teilhard de, Teilhard de Chardin's writings have been banned by the Holy Catholic Church. His promotion of a one-world religion is irreconcilable with the teaching of the Church. I also read that he was a Freemason. Is there proof of this? Uh, please help me. Okay, well. So there we are. Teilhard. So first of uh, John, I think you know more about Teilhard than I do because you're interested in the whole creation, which I'm not interested in, but I know you've studied it much more yes, than I have. Yes. But my whole point, I guess, first of all, is I don't see why, you know, Teilhard is considered so-and-so as like a scientist. Now, I know that you can tell me better than I know. I've heard, I think you speak about this, that Teilhard has been the author of how many frauds or the fraud well, of the, he was uh, involved with uh, with Piltdown Man, I believe, in Peking so, Man. So, so we have to first of all, just for the people, uh, the Piltdown Man is some sort of bone or something was found that was uh, allegedly a connection of some yeah, link missing the, the, link between the missing link, the monkey in, man in, yeah. in, in in evolution. Yeah, and then it turns out that this thing is complete fraud. So yeah, it's not just it's not just a mistake. But somebody planted it there in order to deceive the scientists, in order to make this. Well, connection. yeah, the uh, uh, some of the teeth uh, in the jawbones were, that they were it was filed in, so and so stained. They, 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 were, they were filed in. It wasn't the ages that did that filing, and it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. and it wasn't. It, it wasn't the glacier that put yeah. that stain on his teeth or whatever it was. To it's some modern person, poor man or woman who died. They, they took his bone, they may have stolen from a grave for all we know, filed down his teeth, put some tea on his teeth, well, what's and claimed interesting is that this was a connection. That, that fraud was, labeled, was allowed to be perpetuated by the scientific community for about 30 or 40 years. You know, but, Teilhard, yeah, but, but Teilhard was involved in this He fraud. was involved with it. Nobody knows how much involved with it. it was, I think it was a Rockefeller-funded dig for one. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, but, but, but Teilhard was in there, and he was promoting it himself. Yes, well, it's interesting. Like If you read Wolfgang Smith about Father Teilhard de Chardin, and he was, he was kind of the modernist par excellence. Um, Teilhard. Yeah, Teilhard. Um, he, um, you know, he says, well, the scientists, you ask a scientist about um, Teilhard, they say, oh, he wasn't a scientist, he was a theologian. Then you ask the theologians about him, a good theologian, well, decent theologian, oh, he wasn't a theologian, he was a philosopher. And you ask the philosopher about him, and he says, oh, he wasn't a philosopher, he was a scientist. <laughs> so, because, he, because he, he wrote in such a way... Um, I mean, I thought you would have said after that, no, he wasn't a philosopher, he was a poet. Because, you know, so he, I mean, he, he had some sort of literary ability oh, in, yes. which, in which he could confuse people with, oh, yes. and with the appearance of being scientific or, or theological or what, he was none of those because he was a fraud. Well, he had a real genius for mishmashing all of this in his writings. Mm -hmm. And that's why it was difficult for the Roman authorities to actually nail him on heresy because that's how modernists work. Yeah. They they talk in such a way, and as we said in the previous program, people read it and they get the sense and something isn't right, but he's talking about assumption, he's talking about the Eucharist, he's talking about sacrament. But in his private writings, he says that he had personally redefined all those things. Which is, of course, what the modernists do. In order to accept them. But if you really want to get a line on Teilhard, actually, I have it memorized. Teilhard said, for him, everything was evolution. And Teilhard said, is evolution a theory, I'm quoting now, a theory, a system, or a hypothesis? It is much more. It is a general condition to which all theories, all hypotheses must follow if they are to be henceforth thinkable and true. Evolution is a light illuminating all facts, a curve that all lines must follow. Okay, well, he spoke like a man in love. Yeah. Is this, he's in love, but evolution was everything for him. And so he saw all of men. See, one thing that he was consistent, which many evolutions. They, they don't take it this far, but if evolution is true, which we, which we know it's not, but if evolution is true, then there's no reason to believe that evolution has stopped. It's going to keep going, and Teilhard tapped into that primary error of the 20th century that everything is in a state of movement, well, of everything is in a state of flux, and everything is working towards a, gri a general progress for mankind. So if people mm. understood, the, and they have to read St. Pius X on modernism, his whole thing about modernism is that, among other things, they take a Catholic word 
and they redefine it, but they don't give you the honesty. They saying, don't tell you it. And then, yeah. and then you keep reading them, and after a while you start thinking like them, and all of a sudden you say, but then you start reading the word in a good book, but you're applying it in the wrong sense, and then you don't, then you think you get in the Catholic faith, and you're getting more because you let this guy poison your mind and deform your mind. No, the, the modernist thing is that you know the truth evolves. The truth can't evolve. And once, if a person is going to believe that, you know that. Our Lord is true God and true man in the year 0 AD. And then in the year 2000, because truth keeps evolving and changing, he no longer is. Well then, you know, you may be sincere, God knows, but you don't belong to the Catholic Church because you've lost the faith. And, it, it, and it, what you're saying, it connects with, the, with what the quote I, I just gave. He uh -huh. said, all theories, all systems, all hypothesis must bow to evolution and serve it. Yeah. So that means the dogmas of the Catholic Church as well. It means morality. Yeah. We have this rise of situation ethics yeah. as a result. So this is not Catholic. He's as such. He's actually a, a pagan. Yeah, yeah. He, he's not just a her, you know, I mean, I not just heresy. Saying, he, he's, 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 real, he's really into. I mean, the New Agers love him. The yeah. New Age movement loves Teilhard. And as far as the condemnation, it's. I mean, we we'd have like to have a lot more. It's a monitum. But, it was issued mean, in, but the monitor is not oh, the, no, no, the, the word monitor means in it's a Latin word which means warning. Yeah, it's a warning. So it's a warning. You put you read this stuff, you're putting your you're putting your faith in your soul. At and that was in nineteen sixty two, under John the twenty third of all yeah, people. Yes. And I think the wording of the monitum is, is along the lines of uh, we fail to see how this, these writings conform to the to the Catholic faith. And that monitum is still in place. Yeah. Um, but Teilhard really um, he 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 tapped into the the general consensus of the time and really gave it a voice, which is what a modernist leader does. See, I guess my surprise is, although I've been told I've been wrong before, so I can be wrong in this, but my surprise is anyone's paying any attention to him at all, especially after all the stuff we know about him. Why would we bother with him? But anyway, apparently <sighs> some people still pay attention. Well, Teilhard's really Teilhard's main role is kind of finished. I don't know that anybody's reading Teilhard anymore, yeah. but what he was able to do was he was able to convince enough churchmen prior to Vatican II that religion must change for the sake of changing times. Once he did that, his role is, is finished, and we are still living the results now. I mean, with, I mean we, we do know that, that you know, during the, the, the communist times in Russia, in, in Moscow, they had Teilhard enshrined in... in oh, yeah, their... yeah. His, yeah, Teilhard's work, he's the only Catholic priest, he's a Jesuit too, to have his works on public display in Moscow's Hall of Atheism. Yes, well, that's that, that, that really says that everything. That says it about, all. Yeah, that says yeah. it all. So, but in turn, if someone asks you about it, whether you're a Freemason, well, certainly this this whole idea that uh, the Freemasonic idea is that there are first of all there's two levels of Freemasonry. One is it's a secret society, and as a secret society, it hides from the general public mm -hmm. that it is actually a religion. Now, if they're pushed to the wall and forced to admit it, as they have been in court. They do acknowledge it as a religion, but privately and publicly, generally, they don't even tell people it's a religion. It is a religion. Secondly, it's a pagan religion. What do I mean by pagan? It adores or worships idols. That is, physical, so physical things, whether it's a stone or whether it's a piece of wood, they or adore that as if that stone or that idol is God, him, is a God, not, mm -hmm. not the God, but a God. And so they, are, that's, and it's, they worship, among others, the idol of Moloch, which is in the Old Testament, which among other things, they would sacrifice, that is, they would kill their babies in order to placate the god Moloch. And that is the same idol, among others, that the, the, the Masons worship. So, and, and, and is this just Father Grimm's opinion? Do I have to, I'm not the most learned man on these things, but you can take, take Pope Leo XIII, he says their god is the devil. And that at the 33rd degree, they all worship. Now there'll be some 33rd degrees. People say, Father Grun, you're making this up because I'm a 33rd degree. You know, they have a choice. They can go through door A or door B. If they take the right choice according to them, they'll go through door B, whereby they take Lucifer as their god. Okay, but they'll still have those other ones who think that this just a benevolent society goes through door A. And they, so, as it says in the Psalms, iniquity has lied to itself. If anything was truer than that about masonry. Iniquity, masonry, has lied to itself. They lie to everybody, lie to themselves. But and so, where does where does this tie in with Teilhard? Well, Teilhard's writing, Teilhard's idea, his idea of 
He actually worshipped, I think he said something you told me, but he was actually took some sort of rock and he worshipped the rock because it was part of creation. That when he was a little boy, he was yeah. about five years old, and he was, he was, he was uh, chastised by his, his mother, who was a good Catholic woman, because he was worshipping a piece of stone. Right. So he had that this twist in him. But one thing I will say, too, about that now, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I read a, a bit about Teilhard a, a, a few years back. I never saw any connection that he was a Freemason. But you, 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 you're saying but, that a, he was not a card-carrying, so to speak. Right. Freemason. I've never seen anything that, that yeah. connected him to Freemasonry as a member. But he thought like one. Yeah, his doctrine is Freemasonry. He thought like one. And the last thing is, is how does he affect us today? Well, one of the ways is um, the opening of Gaudium et Spes, which is the pastor, Vatican II document, the pastoral constitution, the, so the Church of Modern, yeah, so-called pastoral, the Church in the Modern World. Archbishop Lefebvre says that the preamble, the introduction to that, is sheer Teilhardianism. They talk about man coming of age, and uh, and all, and so, and that lays the groundwork for how the church is going to orient itself, basing itself on, or church men are going to orient themselves based on this doctrine. But that explains why Pope John Paul II, in work, writing his book, Crossing the Threshold of Hope, he talks about how in the past that the preaching of the four last things, in ju death, judgment, heaven, and hell, was so effective in converting so many people, and you almost ask them, you say, well, why don't we do it now? Yeah. But, but that was for then, and this is for now, is that because of this Teardian Masonic or uh, modernist thinking? I, it's, it's, it's this idea that um, modern man is different now, modern man has come of age, and we have to approach modern man in a new way that will be acceptable for him. I think, it's, I think there was a, the, the bishop from Kazakhstan who said basically it's, uh, it's, it's the sinners telling the bishops how, how they're going to be governed. <laughs> that, that's the open letter just recently. Yeah. If you go on our website to, to read that from yeah. this very courageous bishop. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, uh, so Teilhard, uh, I don't see anybody reading him anymore, but his effect is still with us. Yeah. Uh, that um, the things change for the, sa the, the time, sake of changing times. Different pastoral needs, we're hearing all about that mm -hmm. now. And so we have to change things accordingly. But there's a lot more we could talk about that. We're out of time. And we will uh, see you on the next broadcast. Send us more questions about Teilhard if you need to know anything. Thank you.